Finally, let's make sure we enable the feedback eliminator on the Podium microphone as well. In the matrix page, we had selected the sound reinforcement version of the input processing, but unless we enable the feedback eliminator on the channels page, it won't be part of the input processing for that channel. The feedback eliminator will automatically detect feedback and apply notch filters to remove the specific frequencies that are causing feedback. When you're working online, you can see where the feedback frequencies are by clicking the edit button and looking at the window on the right for up to 10 bands of parametric EQ that are dropped in automatically to reduce that feedback. Now, let's create a couple of partial presets to make it easy to turn reinforcement on or off on this system. So by going to the presets page, the first step is to add a new partial preset. We'll call it reinforce on. To add commands to the preset, we can hit the plus button. For this partial preset, we'll simply mute and unmute the podium microphone to the amplifier. To enable reinforcement, we'll use the matrix mute parameter to unmute the podium mic going to the amplifier. Now when you select the parameter, you can type the first letter of the command into the parameter selection box and it will jump to that set of commands. In this case, I hit the letter M because I know I want to use the command matrix mute. Next, select the channel to operate with, in this case, Podium. Next, select the column channel, which is the destination for the matrix mute, in this case, amplifier. Finally, set the value to zero because we want to unmute the cross point. When done, select Save Selected to save the partial preset. The column widths can be changed by clicking on the vertical lines in the preset contents header row and making them wider or narrower to suit your needs. Once we have the reinforce on partial preset, we can copy this partial preset to a new partial preset that we'll call reinforce off. Now we just have to change the value from zero to one to indicate that we want to mute the audio and then we can hit save selected again to save this new partial preset. To test the preset, let's go to the matrix page and open up the console. Remember, the console can be opened by right-clicking on the system name on the project tree control. The console shows all the previous commands that have been sent to and received from the sound structure device. We can clear it out by clicking the clear button to give us a nice clean starting point. Even when working offline, you can send commands and get acknowledgments back from the system, as you can see in the console window. To execute a partial preset, we need to use the exact command syntax that a control system would use to run the preset. And once we run the partial preset, we can see the commands in blue and the acknowledgments in green that show that the value of the matrix mute changed to 1 and that the system returned that it finished running the partial preset reinforce off. In the matrix page, you'll see that the value of the cross point is now hidden. This indicates that the matrix cross point has been muted. To test the other preset, let's run the command run reinforce on. You will see the matrix mute acknowledgement and then the acknowledgement that the preset ran. On the matrix page, you'll see that the audio has been unmuted to the amplifier. Now that we've updated the project to support reinforcement, one last thing to consider is how to perform volume control in the room. Typically, volume control is used to allow the local participants to increase or decrease the level of the remote audio to the local loudspeakers. Typically, a control system will adjust the fader of the amplifier channel to increase or decrease room volume. In this case, with the podium mic being reinforced, not only will the remote participants get louder in the local room, so will the podium microphone, which is probably not what you want. One way to solve this is to have the control system adjust the fader for the submix remote audio. This way only the remote audio gets louder or quieter and the podium microphone level to the loudspeaker is not changed. If you open the console, you can see the exact commands that can be sent to the sound structure device to increase or decrease the fader values for the submix. If a control system is already controlling the fader for the channel called amplifier, and you don't want to or can't change the control system code, a simple way around this is to change the name of the amplifier channel to something else, for example, amp, 
and then change the name of the remote audio channel to be amplifier. Now commands that are sent to the amplifier channel will affect the submix channel, giving you exactly what you want without requiring any changes to the control system code. By changing the channel names, the changes propagate to all the presets and partial presets so you don't have to change any of those. Once you have made these changes, it's time to save the file to make sure we have all our changes there. For final testing, you would upload the project to a sound structure device and then adjust the cross point gain, presently at minus 12, from the podium microphone to the amplifier to determine how much sound reinforcement is required to hear the podium microphone well in the room. When we go to save the file, if the current settings are different from the last restored preset or the most recently saved preset, you'll be prompted whether you want to overwrite that preset or not. In this case, we will overwrite the preset. This completes our example of building a system that has a presentation microphone that is reinforced locally into the room.